There are certain ideas which are perhaps pervasive in the human consciousness uh, that are not there until they are, and then they are very, very there. Sounds idiotic, I know, but I think at the end of this poem, um, it will make more sense. Welcome to Strip Coverlet. I am Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will take place, of course, in the Walt Whitman playlist, as well as the poetry discussion playlist. The poem in question today is To a Stranger, and it reads as such. Passing, stranger, you do not know how longingly I look upon you. You must be he I was seeking, or she I was seeking. It comes to me as of a dream. I have somewhere surely lived a life of joy with you. All is recalled as we flit by each other, fluid, affectionate, chaste, matured. You grew up with me, were a boy with me, or a girl with me. I ate with you and slept with you. Your body has become not yours only, nor left my body mine only. You give me the pleasure of your eyes, face, flesh, as we pass. You take of my beard, breast, hands, in return. I am not to speak to you. I am to think of you when I sit alone or wake at night alone. I am to wait. I do not doubt I am to meet you again. I am to see to it that I do not lose you. Again, this is a strange poem. This is a poem that seems almost like a fever dream, I think. But there is, perhaps most chillingly, this line at the end. I am to see to it that I do not lose you. This seems stalkerish, right? This seems on the face level as if it is some type of horror novel. You would not wince if you read this in the pages of American Psycho. But when you take into consideration, further consideration, true consideration, not surface level reading, the title, To a Stranger. The idea of the stranger is something that we are, we, we are inundated with as a child. Don't speak to strangers. Don't take candy from strangers. Don't uh, go to the stranger's van. All of these things. What we refuse from then on, basically, to contemplate is that you walk down the street and you were surrounded by strangers. Inside, <coughs> pardon me, those strangers, there's an entire person. Everyone you pass is dealing with their own life. Everyone you pass is struggling somewhere in life. Everyone you pass is leading their own experience. Behind every face, behind every pair of eyes, behind every mouth that says anything you agree with or disagree with, something you like, something you dislike, there is a human struggling. Life, they say, is struggle. We are, uh, so, the stranger, if we are to take uh, into account the further canon of literature, forces us to deal with the idea of Sisyphus, who was, of course, punished by having to roll a rock up a hill for all of eternity. Of course, once that rock uh, uh, reaches the summit of that hill, it rolls down the other side and has to be pushed back up. The idea of the stranger is something that becomes haunting. But this poem, when we take into account that we might be that passing stranger... This poem is addressed to us, to a stranger. We do not know Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman does not know us. Separated here by 200 years. I, th I think he was born in 1819, something like that. So kindergarten Walt Whitman was 100 years ago. The idea of the stranger as an entire person, an entire entity, 
is something that when we take into account that we are the stranger, we have Walt Whitman here addressing us as the stranger in terms that we might find unsettling, thinking about us alone at night, (coughs) pardon me, thinking about us uh, in terms of affection, in terms of maturity, we are chaste, we are fluid, whatever that means, I will not delve into that, but this idea of the stranger, how often do you, do you really think, where is it here? How often do you think you pass on the street someone with whom, as a child, maybe you shared a swing set? Maybe they were giving you underdogs. This one time that you met in your entire life where this moment of play, something that is precious throughout the animal kingdom, play, the idea of play, was pure. And now, separated by years, you have passed each other on the street. Maybe this stranger bumps into you coincidentally and you wear that in your aggression for the rest of the day. Your being has been changed by this by this stranger through much the same contact that you would have shared on the playground playing tag as children, and you have taken it in the exact opposite manner. It, however coincidentally that contact may have happened. Incidental. But we wear this. We wear this for the rest of the day. Perhaps that starts a cavalcade of whimsy in our own life. We're thinking about being bumped by this stranger during the rest of our workday, taking this aggression. What should I, I should have said something. I should have said, hey, I'm walking here. I should have said any of these number of things. We do not grant strangers the same affection that Walt Whitman does in this poem. Should we? Should we take those moments of incidental contact as warmly as we did when we were children? You give me pleasure of your eyes, face, flesh, as we pass. You take of my beard, breast, hands, in return. This uh, custom that we have of shaking hands used to be to tell people, look, there's no gun here, right? Now we take it and we have, we read each other through this small bit of, of contact. Uh, that person does not have a strong handshake. I don't want to do business with him. That person has a dead fish flopping around in the handshake. We read into that. We do not take into account the fact that perhaps that person is not 80% there. He's 20% here. He's here with the frontal lobe. He's he's here because of a job interview. He's here because of uh, we are at some business convention, some type of other, some other type of place where a handshake is necessitated. And we judge based on that, as opposed to taking into full account that stranger as an individual. Uh, One of the things that Walt Whitman constantly is making us reconsider is the base assumption that we make the base assumption that we make about life, the base assumptions that we make about each other, the base assumptions that we make about a day, a moment in time. Walt Whitman is perhaps a constant reminder that we are to be present. You sit on the train, you ride the bus, you are passing people on the street. Every day you do these things. And those people with whom you interact or don't interact, they are all whole people. But are you? Really, are you? In these moments of our lives, are we complete people? Are you there? Is there any you there in these moments shared with other people? That's something that this poem reminds me of, takes me back to, and bases me in. But probably it doesn't. Probably, sitting before you talking about this poem, I am not here. You are not here. How here are we in these moments? 
That's all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what I do here on the channel, hitting the like button really does help me out. <coughs> I don't know where this cough is coming from. Uh, I apologize. Um, where was I? Oh, right. Uh, if you like or appreciate this, there's poetry on the channel every Monday. We are currently going through Ernest Hemingway's short stories. We are going through a Stephen King novel on the channel as well. Um, there are a couple other Stephen Kings that I have to return to. I do know that. I do acknowledge that. I was not present with those books as, as much I should have been, perhaps. Uh, but hitting the like button helps me out. If you uh, want to return for more literature, hitting the subscribe button will make sure that I pop up in your feed from time to time. And as always, I hope to have you back for the next one.